In this video, we're going to talk about predictions in multiple linear regression. Now, this is a topic we've actually seen before, but I'm going to emphasize two new aspects of predictions in this uh, video. We're going to emphasize, let's just write it down to emphasize comparisons and confidence intervals. Once I can spell confidence intervals. I often have a hard time writing and speaking at the same time. Okay, so what, what we're talking about in general here is, imagine in the world of multiple linear regression, we have one numerical explanatory variable, and we have one factor variable with, oops, I don't know what just happened there, but we're back to normal, with two levels. So we have some unique lines for each of our levels of this factor variable f across the numerical explanatory variable x in an effort to explain the numerical response variable y. So this is as if we had fit in our uh, function ln within r f asterisk x from some data frame df. Now what we're trying to do is make predictions. That is, for some specific value x, I'm going to call it x tilde, we want to know what we would predict for y under f2 at that value of x tilde. And we want to know what we predict from our model y hat under f1. So what we're essentially asking here is what does our model predict for the numerical response variable? But moreover, I want us to get to a place where we can use these predictions to say, look, at x tilde, y hat within level f1 is bigger than y hat within level f2. Now, we would like somehow for that bigger statement to be meaningful statistically. Well, really what we're getting at is, I want to figure out how to put confidence intervals on those predictions. And if the confidence intervals don't overlap, or if they do, or if you just want to make comparisons about our uncertainty within that prediction, then these confidence intervals about these estimates are going to capture quantitatively the range of values with which we are uncertain about that prediction. So we're just going to use this setup, uh, something similar to this in R. I'm actually going to make it a little bit more complicated so that we can connect this video to some more ideas we have uh, from this week, specifically on transformations. So over here in R, I'm just going to use our data set empty cars to predict miles per gallon using the variable weight. And so this is our simple linear model, right? And it's really kind of plain and boring. But I could expand this model using some clever transformations, like let's explain miles per gallon using, let's say, the factor AM. So that is a binary categorical variable that is 0 if the car is an automatic transmission and one if the car is a manual. And I'm just stealing that from this line in the help file on the data set empty cars. So I'm going to interact that with a polynomial on weight to the second degree. And what we've got here is a fairly complicated model that essentially fits, look, intercept is going to take on zero for automatic cars. So there's an intercept, and then there's a first degree variable on weight, and then a second degree variable on weight. But it's got its own slope across AM equals, oh, I see. I read that wrong. So there's an intercept, and then here's weight to the first order, and here's weight to the second order. And AM is 0 for this term, this term, and this term, which means those three highlighted terms here, here, and here 
give us our own curve through the data set for cars that are automatics. And then separately, if you add all these terms appropriately together, there is a second curve for cars that are manual transmission. So by including this interaction term between the factor variable AM for the car's type of transmission and a polynomial, we're essentially getting two curves through the data. Now, that's fairly tricky to understand. And if we want to make predictions for it, you certainly don't want to work your way all the way through this model, which is really why I'm trying to avoid writing it out. But in fact, R's function predict called on the fitted object is exactly what you want. Now, the way we've seen predict before is just by calling it by itself. But we could do this extra bit to predict. Let's put in a second argument named new data, and we'll pass to it a data frame where AM first takes on zero and then takes on one. Now that's going to say, let's make a prediction for a car that is not automatic, and then a prediction for a car that is a manual. And I want those at the value of weight. Let's see, what is the mean value of weight? Three, because if you recall, weight, where is it, is in thousands of pounds. So that's really like 3,000 pounds. But weight shows up in three. Uh, in thousands of pounds, so all we need to do is enter three. Now look at this data frame that we are creating here. This is a data frame with two rows. The first row is an imaginary car that's an automatic transmission and weighs 3,000 pounds. The second car is a manual transmission and weighs 3,000 pounds. If we pass this as a argument to the variable new data in the function predict, then what we get out is a prediction for a 3,000 pound automatic car from our model. So instead of having to write out the whole model, the function predict actually writes out the function and then does all the math for us based on the values we pass in. So this is what I meant earlier on in this uh, video when I said we have seen predictions before. We have used the function predict. But what I'm showing you now is we can make comparisons between two specific levels for a value of weight at a particular point that we choose. And then we get out in the same order. The first column here matches up to the first row here. And the second element here matches up to the second row here. So we can see from our model, it appears that cars with automatic transmissions, given that they both weigh the same amount, get slightly better gas mileage than a manual transmission car that weighs 3,000 pounds. OK, so predict is really quite powerful. The way we've seen it before, when we don't have this argument in here at all, like this, it actually picks out all values of, hmm, let me say it a bit different. The way we've seen predict work before is predict will pick out this data set, the original data set, as the data frame to pass into new data. So predict without this extra argument here will assume that MT cars, the original data frame, is what we're trying to make predictions from. But for us, I'm going to emphasize here predictions for specific cars that you have in mind for specific weights. And you could change this weight to 5,000 pound cars just the same. Now, it turns out our model isn't actually that accurate. Here is a negative prediction for miles per gallon for manual transmission cars that weigh 5,000 pounds. OK, so maybe the issue is, oh, are you guys ready? 
I just decided to go on the fly. Let's get really clever. So we can go empty cars and let's group by AM and then summarize by calculating the max of weight. Oh, whoops, I spelled max wrong. <laughs> Look at this. So I was curious about this negative value because that seems wrong. And what's happening is for manual transmission cars, we don't have weights beyond 3,570 pounds. So when I plugged in five here, that was predicting outside the range of my data and thus giving us a bad estimate for weight for miles per gallon, predicted miles per gallon for a manual transmission car that weighed 5,000 pounds. Interesting. Okay, that was my distraction. Hopefully you followed along. If you haven't, check back in now. Back in the world of predict, there's a second argument you can pass to it named interval. Actually, this third argument. And you can say, give me confidence intervals. You can even say the level you want. We'll do 0.95 now, which is by default. So notice what we get here. The first row, and now it makes sense because this data frame goes by rows as well. The first row matches up with this first row. So this is a automatic car that weighs 3,000 pounds. We predicted a miles per gallon of 20.5, but we have a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval on that prediction from 18.4 up to 22.7. And for the same weight, 3,000 pounds, if the car is a manual transmission, then we predict a miles per gallon of 19.1 and have a confidence interval that overlaps fairly strongly with this confidence interval for an automatic car. We have a confidence interval that essentially goes from 17 to 21.2. Oh, so that's pretty interesting. While it appears that the automatic transmission car that weighs 3,000 pounds gets a better predicted average gas mileage, the confidence interval suggests that we really don't have enough data to make those predictions well separated or to, to identify that the different uh, transmission cars actually do get different gas mileage because these confidence intervals, confidence intervals overlap so much. Now remember, this confidence level is rather arbitrary. So as my last Dr. Seuss joke for the semester, if you wanted to pick a confidence percentage of 98 and three quarters, it's gonna take a real Dr. Seuss expert to understand that joke, <laughs> but I enjoy it, so I'm going with it. If you want to change the confidence level to whatever you want, then you can just run it again and get new confidence intervals for you. This is an incredibly nice feature about the function predict because it allows you to do comparisons at whatever specific cars you have in mind, dependent on the model you fit, and you can get confidence intervals of whatever percentage level you want.